Hey, I'm live. Um, it is 540. We will start in six minutes. So if you are logging in and looking for the one song that you have to know as a guitarist, and it will teach you every single thing else that you need to know for the rest of your life, if you conquer this one song, you will be able to walk away with guitar on your brain, guitar in your fingers, you will need to buy all of those little guitar programs that are wandering around out there. This is the one song that you're going to need to have. So buckle in. I will be starting in five minutes. <laughs> oh, God. Hopefully I don't have time to go through and cut off this intro. But if I don't, uh, you will have this on there forever <laughs> and somebody will eventually write that's stupid all right let's go find out how this song goes guitar guitar book one book one the farmer in the dead 6A time. Oof. I don't like 6A time. A major, 4-4, four, 6-8. Four, All of the rests. Sharp signs. Time signature. Quarter note equals 120. Look at how smart you'll be when you're done playing this song. All right. We will be starting in four minutes. You can fast forward ahead. Zip. Drop in there. Chances of us having significant numbers of uh, people watching this video are relatively small. This is I'm I'm thinking it's probably not going to go viral. This is me drinking kombucha. If you like kombucha, this is my favorite. GT's kombucha original flavor. They make a whole bunch of other flavors, and I've tried, I think, um, uh, well, you can't try them all because they're always coming out with new ones. This one is the only one I like. <laughs> and they probably have a hot thousand different flavors. So that's what it is. My haircut is not for 29, 20, 23 now more days. And I am going to look like a maniac. I already am a maniac. And so I try to keep a nice haircut to confuse people. And it's not going to work out this month. Here's why Farmer in the Dell is so important. It has 10 verses. If you play all 10 verses... Here's the, here's here's the guarantee. You get your money back from this video if you, if it doesn't work. You play all ten verses. You get all ten of them perfect. You will be able to play all music. I can't even imagine playing all ten verses, let alone playing them all perfectly, let alone wanting to play them all perfectly. So, uh, yeah, that's my that's my guarantee for, to you. Farmer in the Dell. What's on Farmer in the Dell? All right, let's talk about my guitar. Somebody asked about it yesterday, which is actually very fun. This is my this is um, my strap. I thought that they kind of kind of matched the same color as the wood. So, uh, yeah, it's pretty nice. Um, and it was in the in my shop, and I took it off the wall and put it on my guitar. So that's. Uh, inventory out as they call it uh, a friend of mine built this guitar dan mccrimmon he's one of the great human beings in the planet and uh made it out of, he sent me a list of all the woods that it's made out of and i don't remember any of them um, this looks like spruce but it's not it's something different um this kind of looks like rosewood i don't think it is um and i and i can't remember if the neck is mahogany or not but um i love it i asked him when he built it says don't put any weird stuff on the front of this i don't want to have any dots so it has no dots on here but the dots are on the side three five 
7 and 9. If I had it to do over again, I would not have one on 3, and I'd have the one that's on 9. All guitars put them on 9. Drives me bananas. I put it on 10, which is where all ukuleles have them on there, and that's what it should have been. Uh, let's see. What else about this guitar? Um, it's... Um, has a tiny bit of a weird rattle that I don't like on the second string. And I've looked and looked and looked to try to figure out why it's doing that, and I don't know why. I'm assuming that the, the nut probably is cut a little uh, billionth of an inch too, too wide, and so it has this wow sound to it. And I haven't been able to learn how to play it in such a way as to not have it do that. But it is what it is. All right, 5.46. That's what time it is. Thank you all for being here. Looks like we have about 10,000 people logged in for this class on Frere Jacques. It's that important. Um, I do kind of hope somebody, you know how YouTube, they put the one, the, the, one thing you need to know about this or the six things you need to know or the most important there's one video out there i think it's called the greatest guitarist of all time and um basic the guy is good but uh he's not the greatest there is no greatest guitarist of all time uh but uh all every comment in there is like this is stupid blah, he's terrible blah right? so uh anytime you put an est on the end of anything people are going to show up to tell you it's not est all right farmer in the Dow. not the song you want to play as a guitarist but i do know that there's a lot of good stuff in here that's going to really uh if you're brand new to finger style this is the level that you want to be working on. This is the level that makes sense for you. Uh, getting your right hand together, getting the proper way to think about how tablature and music and standard notation and all that stuff is working together. Do it on a simple song so that you can have to take that toolbox and then move it up to more sophisticated and more interesting songs. It's a very old fashioned idea. It's different than I want to play Eric Clapton. So I'm going to go buy a book of uh, easy guitar for Eric Clapton and then still not be able to play it. Um, this, this system that I use says, why don't we start with the basic nuts and bolts? Why don't we build a foundation and then we'll put a house on top of that and then we'll decorate the house and then we'll invite your friends over and have a, have a cocktail party. Not let's have a cocktail party. Where are we going to have it? You know, how are we going to do that? Um, at least that's how most guitarists approach their guitar life. Uh, they, they want the, they decide to have a cocktail party, but they have no house uh, to do it with. And so that's why we do this system. We're going to start with the grab going to the hard hardware store, getting the, the tools, uh, building a foundation, putting the house on top of it in the proper order. You'll get to your party and you'll have your cocktail party and you'll have a whole lot of great memories along the way uh, to make it worth doing this. Okay. Oh, Elizabeth. Hey, how are you? I put it on uh, the headline on it. This is the most important uh, song ever. So um, I want you to... Uh, Make sure that you agree with me that this is this this is the answer to all guitar. All right, lots of things to double check prior to starting any song, and what we want to do: make sure your your posture is correct. You're you're not playing with your this up here. You're not playing with your music on the kitchen table, leaning over trying to play. That's not good. You're not sitting on the couch with your feet up on the couch. You might be doing that. Um, with the music propped on your knees, trying to learn how to play guitar. Um, those are pretty good recipes for failure. And if you don't want to play guitar, you should keep doing that. If uh, um, you have been into Guitar Magazine and they, you found out that your favorite rock star, that's all he did was sit on the couch for eight years and taught himself how to play guitar. If you're that guy, then then yeah, there's there's about... Once every five years, there's a guitarist that's actually successful doing that, and the rest are not. And they're, the rest are, um, you know, who knows what they're doing. What we really are working on here is proper posture, guitar at a 60-degree angle. Your thumb back here where I don't see it. Your chord shapes are nice and round. Um, this third fret right here is oddly close to my nose. 
those are the things that you really want to be thinking about. What we don't want is this way down here, oops, because it knocks the, the stuff off of the piano. Um, we want it, it's going to make playing harder. You see lots and lots of cowboys playing that way, but they're making their lives harder. And that's what cowboys do is live hard lives. And you don't have to be that way. You don't have to do that in this instrument. So we have a 60 degree angle, nice, beautiful, soft hands over here. Notice this is vertical and not weird. Um, this is just beautiful. Shoulders flat, straight, comfy. This hand is going to come across here like that. And, every, and again, nothing weird, not doing any of this kind of stuff, right? Just nice and straight. Every posture is everything in guitar. This is a hard instrument to hold on to, hard instrument to do. And we want to make sure that you're doing the least amount of work possible and protecting your body the most to make sure that it's easy for you. Um, I'm using a footstool to keep this leg um, higher and then no footstool on this leg it's just lower that way the guitar can sit down between my legs uh and i'm very happy i'm sitting on a pillow <laughs> um and so all that stuff plays into having a pleasant time practicing uh two things you have to do to become a successful guitar player or a successful musician of any ilk you got to practice in the beginning 50 minutes a day once you're a college trained professional classical guitarist five hours a day um just a moment there's jets flying over my house they're running uh, i think it's the national guard is flying jets over denver today and so you i don't know if you can hear it on the spit the microphones but they're flying jets over and it's kind of cool um everything we want is to be comfortable we want to make practicing easier you got to practice you know a few minutes a day 10 minutes a day then 15 minutes a day then 220 hours a day whatever you know right but but make it something that's doable find a slot in your schedule contrails and all yeah we're going to have contrails um, i'm going to magically spontaneously turn into an alien creature um, because of the, them flying over here um and so we, practicing is an essential part of being a musician. Uh, the other thing that you, you, the guitarists goof up on is you need to show up. You need to get your guitar in its case and take it out of your house to go meet with somebody. Okay. And that somebody can be another friend who plays guitar. That somebody could be a friend who plays a different instrument. That could be your teacher. That could be your ukulele or ukulele, your guitar group. That could be anybody, right? But you got to get one on one, one on ninety with with other people. Um, otherwise, chances of you doing this for a lifetime really go down. You get bored playing the songs you know how to do. Um, I get students in my class all the time who bought a guitar in the seventies. Uh, they spent, um, you know, six months to two years playing folk music in the 70s. Then folk music in the 70s stopped being popular. And so the guitar stopped being popular. Here comes this jet again. I don't know if you can hear that. Um, it becomes kind of like that. So I don't like those songs anymore. And then the guitar ended up in the case. The case ended up under the bed or out in the garage, worse. And... Um, that's why everybody in the world has a guitar in their house. They have very fond memories of that guitar, but they don't play it anymore. And the reason they don't is because their taste changed, music changed, their skill set changed. They didn't have the proper training. They weren't getting around with other people. They weren't uh, didn't have the tools in place. And then the guitar ends up in the case. And so by showing up, and that even means showing up here on these video lessons or whatever that'll help keep you moving forward it'll help introduce you to new, new ideas that you didn't necessarily think of all right so farmer in the dell oh can you hear him up there too uh elizabeth that's exciting so louder this time yeah that um that's interesting can, oh are they coming through here yeah okay <laughs> that's funny i was like hey, you can't hear those jets clear up there um all right beautiful so we've got the jets all cleared up we're ready to go here's your chord make sure that it's it's making sense to you index finger fourth fourth string second fret middle finger 
third string, second fret, and ring finger, second string, second fret. Okay, it's hard to say all those words. Thumb not up here, thumb is always hidden, and thumb is right behind the middle finger. Okay, ideally on the A chord, you're going to hit A, A string going down. That's ideal. If you happen to hit the sixth string, it's okay. This is an E chord, E note, E string, and there is in the chord of A, there is an E note. Okay, so it sounds fine, but because we like on guitar, we like to root a chord, and that means that the A string and the A chord they just sound really nice together. Okay, there's that. The song is in six eight. Okay, so if you look over at your sheet music over on the top left, you'll see a quarter note equals 120, and that means how fast you can, the computer's going to play it. Um, you can, for the most part, disregard that. Uh, that the computer won't, but you can. Then there's underneath that, there's a treble clef. Have you practiced drawing your treble clef? That's something you want to be able to do as a musician, is to draw one without looking at it and make it, make it convincing. Okay. Uh, then you've got some hashtags after that. That means you're in the key of A. Those three sharp signs say, hey, I'm probably in the key of A. I might be in the key of F sharp minor, but probably in A. Um, and uh, for the most part, if you're going into academic guitar, if you're going into either jazz or classical, you are going to have to learn to read the standard notation line. Otherwise, it's optional whether you learn to read that or not. Um, you do want to know the length of notes in this situation. So you've got some eighth notes, some quarter notes, some half notes, and some dotted half notes. So you've got a good variety of notes that we're going to play and give us a chance to get a little bit of kind of a cool rhythm going in this. When you're in 6-8, you have three choices of how you're going to strum it. You might strum it with six strums. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's going to feel like a lot of strumming. Okay, you can also go up and down. One and two and three and four. One and two and three and one and two and three. One, two, three, four, five, six. 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 Okay, you can do that. Probably not a great idea, but you could do that. Um, you can sometimes, sometimes in 6-8 play with three beats per measure. Uh, the farmer in the dell. The farmer. I, mean, I think I'm doing it too. The farmer in the Farmer in the ah, I can't do it. Okay, it's not possible. Um, some Green Sleeves is a good example of a song that you actually can play even though it's in 6-8, you can't actually get all three beats in it, just the way the music works out. This song is not going to be very cooperative with three. Um, but more than likely, when you see 6-8, you're probably going to strum in two, which means you're probably going to strum twice per measure. Okay? And um, unless it's a real fast, super fun dance type song, then you might do six beats. But in this case, you're probably going to do the farmer in the dell strum the farmer in Okay, so probably two beats per measure instead of six is going to make sense. If you did six, it'd be the that actually might make sense, right? So you can do you can do. Don't do that. That's too complicated. I might be magically turning it into four time accidentally. Um, probably am. Uh, then that gives you, we've got the chord on, we've got strumming over here. The other one to do is, of course, plucking. The farmer in the den. The farmer in the den. I hold the dairy. The farmer in the den. Now, in that case, I grabbed the strings four, three, two, and one and used all four fingers. Okay, could just as easy as grab strings five, four, three, two. The farmer in the dell. The farmer in the dell. I hold the dairy. The farmer in the dell. Okay, 
Okay, so we could do that, and that would be fine. Um, that way I'm getting my thumb on the A string and getting that root sound in there. You can also split your hand up, so don't re realize you got that as an option. Put your thumb on the A and then put these on the high strings. The farmer. Way I'm just not playing the, the fourth string there, and I actually kind of like that. I got the high notes here and the root note here. Sounds pretty good. Um, you'll see a lot of when you see classical players, you'll see a lot of this. The farmer down, farmer down, the the dairy, farmer the down. Okay, so they will actually roll the chord. Sometimes they'll go from into index middle ring. Sometimes they'll go the other way. The farmer in the down. The farmer in the down. Hi, ho, the dairy. The farmer in the down. Yeah. So all of those are kind of cool claw shaped things to try. Uh, try and, and a song with 10 verses, you should be able to, your, your goal is to come up with 10 different ways to strum this thing. Uh, every single time you come around, do something different with your right hand. Eventually, you'll find the two or three best ways to play a song, and then that's how you'll stick with it. Chances of you playing Farmer in the Dell on a long-term basis is pretty low, so we don't spend a ton of time telling you to memorize it or work on any of that. Um, but do use it as an opportunity for your right hand to try every possible thing you could think of. The Farmer in the Dell, the farmer in the Dell. I own the dairy in the farmer in the Dell. That's a chunk stroke where you're going down. You're not trying to make any sound going down other than a percussive feeling. And using these three fingers and then stopping this out. And then when I come back up, I'm using my index finger to drag over the strings. It's a ukulele technique. See that when you play reggae, you'll play that exact pattern. It's kind of fun. All right, now uh, let's let's go through pick a pick a pattern. Let's play through the song twice. Okay, and here's how you read measure eight. Measure eight says I'm going to go into measure eight the first time, the second time, the third time, all the way through the ninth time, and then on the last time, the tenth time, I'm going to skip measure eight and I'm going to go to measure nine. Okay, so just be aware. When you are newer in music, you've got to learn to read repeats. It's very complicated. And this, in this case, you're supposed to play measure eight nine times in a row. And then the last time you don't play measure eight, you play measure nine. Okay, so we're going to play it one time through as if it is the ninth time through. And then the last time through, we'll play um, into measure 10, not playing, I'm sorry, measure nine, not playing measure eight. Okay, so we'll start on uh, uh, the next to last verse. Okay? Get your A chord on. Okay, pick whatever strum pattern you use on the first time through, pick a different one the second time through. So I'm going to do um, this the first time through, and then I think I'll do this the second time through. Okay, from the top, one, two, the farmer in the down. Oh, I wanted to do the last verse, the rat takes the cheese. Let's start from there. One, two, the rat takes the cheese. The rat takes the cheese. guitar ring out don't let up on your chord until the guitar is done singing and then take your the palm of your hand and just slide it up over the bridge to get the guitar to stop um, for some reason when I went back for the last time I switched over to a D chord no reason to do that at all I could have left my A chord on the whole time through would have been a lot better <laughs> all right don't don't play the wrong chord all right next part of the sheet music all the sheet music and that i ever hand out really has exactly the same pr process um we first want you to come through with the chords figure out how to sing the song really think about our right hand and the smart stuff we want to do with that then we want to learn how to play the melody just the melody without singing okay in this case every single note is either a two 
or a zero. And, uh, and when we're playing on guitar first position, this is all the ones, all the twos, all the threes, and all the fours. So that's the, the setup for your hand. In this case, we're going to start on the fourth string, second fret. We'll play that. And then we'll go on. We'll just use a middle finger up and down on whatever string it needs to be on. And then pluck the string. Okay, so from the top, one, two. Two, 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 two. two. up the rhythm. One of the things that's important in this song, if it says the farmer, you have to hit the two twice. The, 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 when the, the farmer in the dell. But if it's, there's, it's a one syllable word, like the child takes the cheese, uh, or the rat takes the cheese, you don't play it an extra beat on here. You don't go ahead and still play the note. The, 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 the rat takes the cheese. The so I probably should have put parentheses around those um, to remind you. Maybe you play those notes and maybe you don't. Um, but the first time through, you for sure play those notes. Farmer in the Dell. Okay. Um, next, that's pretty inefficient. Okay. This one finger all the way up and down. Really, really inefficient. A lot of work. We don't need to do it that way. So now we begin to talk about true finger style playing. Uh, playing the melody is... You're playing it with your fingers, so I guess it's finger style. Playing it with the chords, you can just be folk style, right, and strum. Um, but when we are getting ready for full-on finger style type play uh, and then actually moving into classical music and jazz, uh, what we want to be doing is grabbing the chord. Okay, let's grab that whole chord. A, A, B, D. And then let's play the exact same thing. Let's play that guitar melody, but let's see how many times we need to lift up a finger or put down a different finger, or maybe adjust a different finger, adjust a finger to get it. You'll find these two fingers are never even going to have to move. They're just hanging out here, and we're going to help. They're going to help us out a ton with getting extra notes in. Okay, so from the top, put your A chord on. Two, 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 two. Now lift up your ring finger and put it back. Oh, two, 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 two. First string, oh, oh, add your ring finger or your pinky finger, two, oh, put your um, two ring finger back where it goes, two, two, oh, two, two, oh, two, let's play again, two, two, Sounds, sounds so much less work. I got to hold that chord so there's a little bit extra pressure. It's a little bit harder on my hand, but I don't have to do near as much work about it, and I'm way less likely to blow it in terms of hitting the right string if I'm just sitting there hanging out on that. Now, that is what you would want to be able to get out at level one, okay? Those of you next level players, you're thinking about, all right, I'm going to do that exact thing, but I'm going to use lots of these fingers over here, not instead of just the thumb. We, 
I tend to be over thumbsy and you don't want to be like me. You want to get comfortable playing with all of your music with these two fingers because they're going to turn out to be way faster um, and create a different feeling, a different sound out of your guitar uh, and that, that may or may not benefit the song. So let's try it with just these two fingers over here. Let's play those and then play the same, same exact song. Okay. One, two. particularly efficient choices there. Um, the more you play like that, the more your brain will start to help you make better choices with stuff. Um, when you're playing with this particular type of style where you're using these two to play uh, a lot of melody notes or possibly arpeggio notes, um, in the beginning, your brain is just one more thing and it's going to complicate playing guitar. Uh, but long term, it's going to make you much faster and much more capable. So it's always a good idea to be practicing with the claw style to play the whole, to play everything. Okay. All right. Final piece of the puzzle here. If you're in my class here in Denver, I don't teach this to you. I don't waste your time learning tough you because you got your hands full learning tough acts. Sorry. You don't, you've got your hands full getting your A chord figured out, getting your pads of your fingers toughened up learning how to read tablature that's a lot that's plenty for your first four weeks in guitar i don't necessarily need you to know how to do tough acts but i do play it for the classes okay difference between that plan and this plan hey greg is that you at, at that level you're just trying to survive Right, but and when we're here on YouTube, and I'm trying to leave this video in case somebody logs in, I don't know what level you're at. And, and tough acts is our sort of our bread and butter as finger style players. And if you can get where that's making sense with this one chord song, all of the rest of finger style is the same thing. Okay, uh, you just have to. And, and so when you're clear on this, and you're like, okay, I got the big picture here, every single thing else will come together. So. You're going to grab your A chord. <clears throat> Notice on tough acts, the first note is a two, just like on all the other things. Two. And then you've got zero, two, two. You've got the choice of using your claw, zero, two, two. Okay, that sounds beautiful. Or you can take your thumb, zero, two, two, which is probably how you want to do it in the beginning. Okay. The big deal here is. Your thumb is resting on the string you're not going to play that way it can't accidentally go off okay so you could play it or you can play it with these three fingers Both of those give a different feeling, a different texture to the song. All of that stuff is um, artist choice. You get to make those decisions. What's going to sound best on my guitar in my life at this moment in time? Which do I have the skill set to do? And I always encourage, hey, you're pretty good with your thumb. Play with your claw. If you're pretty good with your claw, play with your thumb, right? So just to be continuously working on getting a little bit better at this basic granular level and then when you go to the more complex music um, you've already got those skills solidly built in so you don't have to think about them okay so notice also in measure two when you hit that chord there are two extra notes there two oh. again in finger style play we like to add in tons of extra notes that are absolutely doing no job whatsoever other than making things sound pretty and so if you come in with that chord and just let it ring, it's fine. But if you come in with this chord and then add, you just get a little bit more zing out of your buck and not that much harder to play, right? So your fingers are already there, just pluck that chord out and you're going to end up with a much nicer overall final presentation just by adding in a little bit of extra dazzle, okay? Again, we're not trying to make 
create the world's greatest Frere Jacques, we're trying, or Farmer in the Dell. What are we playing? We're trying to make not, we're not trying to make a great Farmer in the Dell. We're trying to get all of the tools in our toolbox and get our control over both of our hands where it makes sense. And then we can go play something worth playing, right? All right. Now, I want to play major, through measure two there. Uh, we're going to hold that A chord. I'm going to pluck the two and pluck the chord. We'll grab those two twos, three twos. Chord, index, thumb. Okay, you can also do it with just your thumb. That works as well. Different feeling to it, but it's equally good. Next note is an open two, so we're going to lay um, open second string. So we're going to have to lift up our ring finger. And then we put it down. I'm going to do claw system first for the next two measures. Okay, so it's all four fingers. The other way to do it, of course, is with your thumb. those decisions if i'm going to play this song 10 times one time i'm going to do it one way and another time i'm going to do it a different way okay but again trying to bring your full set of tools uh understand what you're doing there now measure five the arranger said hey i want a glissando there so i'm probably if i'm dedicated to the sheet music and i really want to do exactly what it says those big lush chords there that the sheet music calls for i have to do those with my thumb however i don't necessarily always follow the rules when i follow every single notation on a piece of music and i might want to do i might want to continue on with my claw through that and instead of doing i might just grab my thumb on this fifth string and then these three fingers on the lower strings might um, keep all four fingers together. All of those are possibilities. Um, I do think the arranger was right. Sounds the best, okay? Um, but try different ways. Find out which right hand technique makes the most sense for you. And then once you are committed to a certain sound coming out of your guitar or a certain sound at any particular moment on the guitar uh, in the sheet, in the song uh, then just make sure you do it that way okay, I'm to lift up my ring finger at the end of measure six to get the zero and then i'm going to put it back down and then i might go back to my claw all right i'm sorry so it's quarter note got an eighth note followed by another quarter note but i gotta lift my ring finger up and then get those last uh, that last chord zero two two okay and then there's two more pretty notes and that's because this finger is hanging out open and i just didn't tell it to put it back down right it's kind of creates a little weird sound in there okay or with your thumb tossing that B note in in the A so it creates a weird bit of attention to resolve. Da, bum. Um, okay, so then again, if you're a level one player, I don't expect you to play tough acts. I'm expecting you to listen to tough acts, right? And to know where you're headed as a guitarist um, because that's the finger style line, okay? If you are wanting to work on it, that's perfectly fine. It's not against the rules. Um, as long as you feel like, yep, I definitely got my A chord figured out. I know how to do that. I definitely am feeling comfortable playing some melody. I can get this melody out of the guitar. I want to really get to be a finger style guitarist. Uh, let's let's play this in finger style fashion, either thumb down or with your claw or a little bit of both. Okay, let's play from the top. This is your grand finale for today. It's 619. We're killing it. One, two, oh, it's in six. Count in two and then go. One, two.
big cord like that, for sure make sure, make sure that, for sure make sure that your cord stays anchored solid all the way through while your guitar finishes spitting out the last of its beautiful tones that you have created. Uh, let your guitar help you out being awesome by just not yanking up on the cords and throwing the guitar down and, and wandering off to dinner. So uh, that's it for Fa Farmer in the Dell, the greatest, most important song that every guitarist needs to know. And... Uh, um, honestly, guys, with the exception of arpeggio picking techniques and chord changing techniques, there's a whole lot of music that a whole lot of tools that you can use on real music on good stuff. And um, you would could do yourself a favor by just getting really solid on these ideas um, and becoming a fine finger style guitarist. All right, that's enough. I hope you guys have a wonderful evening. Uh, Elizabeth and Greg, thanks for saying hi on the chat box. And anybody else that's hiding out up there, however many people, probably only one other person, uh, have a wonderful evening. And I will see all of you tomorrow. If you uh, need to go check the website uh, for uh, the, the sheet music and that sort of stuff, we're at denverguitarorchestra.com. And tomorrow's song will be, I forgot, uh, Ain't Gonna Rain No Mo. So uh, old-fashioned, silly song, uh, and we'll, we'll, we'll goof it up as much as possible. So um, have a wonderful night. Thanks, guys, for being here. Have a wonderful evening. Stay safe, and I will see you tomorrow. Hitting the, hitting the end stream button. <laughs>